Hey, you. You. Wait. Come here. Come here. All right. Listen. What's the matter? Uh, Listen. Please. You left the radio on. No. Help Burglars me. don't break in and sit around talking. Harry. Okay, okay. Hey, you. You. at first. It uh, must have been stuck somehow. Seems okay now. So, you burst in, but he'd gone. Yes. He must have moved down fast. Found anything? No, there's nothing down here, sir. The ground's pretty soft there, too, but there's not a mark. You can talk to her now. It was a definite attempt at strangulation. He used a rope, and a thick one, too. I don't remember much at all. I was asleep, and then I was on my feet, standing by the bed. And the rope was tight around my neck, and I was choking. He must have dragged you from the bed. Did you see him? No. He was behind you, then? Above. I'm sorry? He was above me somehow. Way above. Well, he was a very tall man. Is that what you mean? I don't know. Take your time, darling. He... He smelled of beer. Beer? Yes. That's a start, I suppose. A tall man who'd been drinking. Coming to bed? Uh, no, not yet, dear. Darling, every door and every window is locked. I've checked. Mm hmm. So have I. Now, are you going up there now? I'll be up in a minute. I just want to finish my beer. Okay? But don't be long. Huh? No, no.
were rusted through. See? And someone forgot to put this bar back into place. Someone forgot? That's how it would seem, Mr. Hewitt. Inspector, my daughter was damn near killed here. An accident, Mr. Hewitt. An accident? There's nothing to suggest otherwise. Our dust of ages down there. Nobody's been in that cellar for years. What, what, what is a trap door doing there anyway? Part of the inn. Inn? Yes, this house used to be an inn. You didn't know? No, I didn't know that. Well, it was years ago. Beginning of the last century. This would have been the bar, I'd say, and the uh, trap door access to the beer cellar. He smelled a beer. That's what she said, he smelled a beer. There isn't any smell of beer. I told you, it's as dry as dust down there. Mm. Interesting. Oh. No, uh, it's just a history of this place, that the old village in this house. Inspector was right. The other room was the bar, and this uh, room with the uh, fireplace and all was probably what they called the snug. Now, what are you talking about? Well, this house, my love, once upon a time, was an inn. It's called the Queen's Head. They were licensed to sell and brew their own ale. Yeah, you'd smell a beer if you lived here, all right. I don't know what I'm talking about, really. I just have this feel. Of... The north bedroom. Now, that, that, that would be Norma's room, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, yes, I suppose so. Yeah. Well, what are you going to put Norma's bring? bedroom. That's where it happened. Well, what happened? It weren't me. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. I must explain. It was a mistake. A terrible mistake. You must help me. Please. Please. Help me. Help me! Mr. Hewitt. I'm sorry if I startled you. Who are you? What do you want? My name is Philip Bradwell. I heard about you at the police station today. I'm a psychiatrist. They call me in from time to time whenever they have a person who is disturbed. My daughter's not crazy. I'm quite sure she isn't, Mr. Hewitt. But I do think I may be able to help you, and her. How? Well, not as a psychiatrist, but because of my interest in psychic phenomena. I will have to know everything that has happened so far, every detail. Come along, then. I must congratulate you, Mr. Hewitt. It's admirably detailed. Uh, don't worry, Mrs. Hewitt, your daughter is not going mad. But she is in danger. From whom? From a man who died nearly 200 years ago. Let's put these facts into some kind of reason. This is the house where Alfred Brown murdered his wife, Emily, on May the 23rd, 1817. The house was an inn, and Brown was the publican. That explains the smell of beer. Alfred Brown was convicted of the crime and hanged two months later. Hanged with a thick rope that would have left an abrasive mark around his throat. And as is the custom in this country, he was hanged at 8 o'clock in the morning. It is also documented that he um, ate a hearty breakfast. Of bacon and six eggs. Where was this murder supposed to have taken place? 
in the room that your daughter now occupies. Are you trying to tell me that my daughter and a dead man are one and the same on occasion? His soul, spirit, call it what you like, has possessed her and through her is reliving those evil days. But even if I believe this, why? That is what we must try and find out and as quickly as possible. You said she was in danger. Such visitation imposes a terrible mental strain. Her mind could snap. Oh, my baby. Well, what do you suggest? Induce a trance under controlled conditions. Where is your daughter? I'll go to her and fetch her. No. The bedroom is where it began. Here we are, Hangman. A shilling for you. Make it quick and neat. He's on the gallows. He's on the... Shh. Alfred. Alfred Brown. Let's go back, shall we? A month or two. This room. You come in. Your wife, Emily, is where? Do that again? Mr. Hewitt, no, you're very no, delicate. No, no, no. She, she can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Mr. Hewitt, I didn't promise it would be easy. It's not going to be easy. The same thought struck me. But you found nothing. No. You won't either, not without more help from her. Or him. This man running down the stairs, his knife glinting in his hand, broad-bladed it was, and sort of curved. That's the transcript of the trial. A broad-bladed and curved. It might be um, a cookery, a ceremonial dagger. Well, whatever it was, or lack of it, got him hanged. Yeah, he, he, he went to the gallows insisting that there was another man and another knife. Isn't that what you were looking for? That trap door opening up, you know, either it was an accident or it was symbolic of a hanging or... A, I suppose it's more than that. Suppose he was pointing the way to the cellar. You see, we both came to the same conclusion. The only thing is, well, the authorities at the time searched the place from top to bottom. If there had been a knife, they would have found it. 
Alfred Brown, you must make confession before you go to face your maker. Not guilty. Not guilty. No, I'm not. I'm not guilty. You were judged so by twelve good men and true. No. Not guilty. Then help us to prove it. Show us a sign. Lead us. Ten years ago, possibly even before the place was an inn. Now, if I'm right, there should be a chimney out there.
Alfred Brown was innocent. They hung the wrong man. That's what tormented his soul over all these years. And now that someone knows, well, now that we know, I don't think you'll be troubled anymore, Mr. Hewitt. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. Well, 